here in Santa Maria, California, where we're trying to give you second thoughts about your government that's gone so amok. With me here in the studio is a man who's been here before about two months ago, and he has gone ahead and filed that lawsuit, and he's had his first hearing in front of Federal Magistrate Brennan. Brennan. Michael Warnkin, welcome back to the show. How are you doing? I'm doing excellent. How did you feel a couple of days ago appearing in front of the magistrate? How do you feel it went? Well, I'm elated, for one. It was definitely an interesting experience going in front of a federal judge for the first time. I've been in front of state judges, uh, local judges for minor matters. This was exciting. I was nervous about the idea, but when it was happening, I wasn't nervous at all. And I feel it went well. And I was there. And I was watching you in action. And you took off your jacket, and you made me nervous. You put your jacket down like, I'm going to come after you, judge, if you don't listen to me and hear my argument. But the judge was saying, one, he looked at both your briefs, and I doubt that he really read your whole brief, because your whole brief was a foot thick. And I just can't believe he looked at it all. But he basically concluded you didn't have standing to sue, which seemed a little bit loony toony to me. And secondly, he said this was not something the judiciary could deal with. He said he didn't think you had established judiciability. Yes. Is that right? That's what he put forward. I definitely don't agree with him, but at least he conceded down to those two points and felt that perhaps the rest of it was okay. So giving him that much credit, it was, it was interesting. And yeah, I, I do admit I took my jacket off, I got hot. I, I felt at first he was biased against me. I felt that before. I think anybody else who's gone into court who's not part of the system or the greater, uh, the greater power structure, they felt that. And I made my point. And not only did he begin to see where I was coming from, but the other side really did as well. And I had some pretty tough lawyers. The Attorney General had a, had a sharp cookie and... Uh, John Kennedy. John Kennedy. The super lawyer. <laughs> the Assembly had a very, very uh, experienced lawyer. There's certainly a lot of trial experience himself. And he and I traded a lot of authorities on issues. And I really feel that I, I really came through. My citations, my issues that I brought up, he wasn't able to answer them. They cited that they had immunity under the speech and debate clause and I brought up the issue that the speech and debate clause didn't apply here. So, and they didn't really have a response to that. <laughs> they didn't. I was there. And, and this is the value of having, having somebody like me right there. They didn't respond to They just sort of like said, hmm, they didn't want to get to that issue. They wanted to say, you don't have standing there we don't have to look at the merit of, of the case. Of the case. Because the merit of the case was a foot thick. I don't think the issue of it being a foot thick, it's done in evidence that she You had all your addendums backing up your, yes. Yes. your primary argument. I got it. I got it. Do you think you're going to have to appeal it? Because he didn't say no to you. Oh, so I'm thinking. I th There's still a chance he may rule partially in your favor. Yeah, I, I feeling it going into it was that the uh, burden was definitely upon me to, to prove my case, and I think that he didn't really feel I had it. After the presentation, after we fought it out, and after we discussed a lot of the cases and the issues, and I, I guess we would say clarified some points, the mood changed, and I think the judge could really see it. The other side, I think they were confident going in, going out. I think they realized that uh, I'm not a puffball, and I knew what I was talking about. I think uh, you even mentioned to me at one point in time, the attorney general uh, stopped, opened his mouth, and stared at me, gawking. Like, not wow. the attorney general, the, the attorney uh, uh, Woodruff for the, for attorney, the attorney general. general yes. Yeah. yeah, he his head did a 90 degree sharp turn like that, because um, he didn't. He was he was it was obviously he was shocked that you were quoting the cases correctly and you were enunciating specifically what in that case applied here and now on the 21st of January 2009 in your case, uh, which was titled uh, Warnkin versus Schwarzenegger. Yes. You had to sue... The king. The king, the governor, <laughs> the dictator of California. And actually, I shouldn't say dictator because... Well, we'll get to that. He yeah. was still working on that day when the rest of the legislature had gone off to party at the abomination in uh, Washington, D.C. Uh, and we'll get to that in a few minutes. But I want to let you go on. So are you going to be able to overcome 
the standing issue and the judiciability issue? Or do you think he didn't really read your cases well enough to know you'd already overcome those issues? Well, I think there's definitely a prejudice because, uh, and I'm not saying prejudice in the term that we usually think pre prejudice. I am a pro se litigant, I'm not an attorney. So when he sees a very well seasoned attorney writing what he says and then looks at my briefs, he's gonna give more credit to that. I really believe, as I remembered back to my pleadings and in my uh, opposition to their motion to dismiss, I, I dealt with the issue of, of standing and I dealt with the issue of justiciability. In fact, they brought up a case called Vieth versus Jubilee and I understood the case thoroughly and it is a bit of a complex case and I was able to succinctly explain what the standing issues were and point out why it didn't really apply here. And I said, well, I'm really not aiming in that direction. I'm saying I'm using the, the standard of one does not have the ability to uh, judge their own powers. One doesn't have the ability to be the judge of their own action. And uh, any case brought in front of a court really is a matter in which two people have a dispute and neither of them could act as judge in that matter and you're asking for a third person to, to judge that dispute. So and I said that that's been that's a rather ancient authority and I named the cases to back it and I said this other authority doesn't apply here. So I said it's very cleverly you know cleverly uh, uh, fronted but no it doesn't apply here. And, and, and as I came through with these authorities having to do with the issues and I threw them up, they stopped having answers. And I think, I think that uh, they couldn't really have an answer because if their answer was wrong, I'd shoot that down. And you don't want to look wrong. I mean, if you really don't know, you probably shouldn't say. But John Kennedy did look wrong. <laughs> I watched him as he finally, and, and the judge, uh, magistrate, federal magistrate, who was not a federal judge, magistrate, uh, Brennan finally turned to John Kennedy and said, you've got anything else, Mr. Kennedy? And uh, John Kennedy said, no, I'll rest on my brief. filed brief. I have nothing more to say. Then he turned to you. He asked you the same question, and you said? Uh, I had, uh, I went back to one point. They, they made the point that the 14th Amendment, <laughs> it was kind of funny. They said that we're all basically equally I want to say shafted. All of us, since we are all equally damaged <laughs> by these districts being so bad. And I said, well, that's not what I'm arguing here. I said that I sent 14 petitions in, and I didn't hear anything back. And I even made the point that, well, you guys have a robotic pen. And you've got these these uh, prefab statements, these prefab, uh, we don't happen to agree with you, but we appreciate you for being part of the process. And they'll have the pen sign it, and they'll send it to you. Well, I didn't even get that. And I said, this is an equal of uh, issue of equal protection in that issue that I'm not getting access and somebody else is. And I said, the only way that equal opportunity is defeated is if, if the assembly did nothing for nobody. <laughs> I said, even my opponents aren't arguing that. And, and I said that in the end, ultimately, ultimately, if it is the case that the 14th Amendment somehow can't apply here, I said it may ultimately, my case may rest on the 9th Amendment, the political rights of the citizens. And I did the case, United Postal Workers versus Mitchell, and I said, ultimately, we have a reasonable expectation for a rational level of representation, and one representative for every 475,000 is not. Basically, one for a half a million people is shot. Is total tyranny. Total tyranny. And that's why they don't answer our letters, our phone calls. Yes. That's why our local assemblymen and state senator never call us back. They never send us a real letter answering our specific yeah. questions. No, uh, they send us these form letters. No, no form emails even. Yes. No, <laughs> no representative has lost in four elections. No one has lost. You're in this state. In this state. Of California. In the lower chamber, yes. And that's your issue. We have no representation. Yes. My point would be... It doesn't matter because we didn't elect anybody. Yeah. The elections were rigged, won by the media. Perhaps. Well, we just heard, uh, you heard my conversation here with Attorney Philip Berg. Yeah. Well, I, the, I, the national media gave Obama a free pass well, through here on the birth certificate, which should have been their first issue. If you don't have standing, as Judge Brenning says, you don't. Yeah. Obama apparently doesn't have standing to be president because he's not naturally born and he won't produce the birth certificate. If Brennan said to you, Mr. Warnkin, Mr. Warnkin, I want you to produce your birth certificate proving you were born in California to have standing. Just produce it. Would you produce that birth certificate? Yeah, really quickly. <laughs> really quickly. <laughs> if that's the only issue, I can, I can meet that standard, yes.